In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at relations functions. And we're going to use this date in the top left-hand corner here. Uh, it lists uh, four different people, their birth months, and how much they make per hour in their part-time job. And so what you see on the right side here are a couple of examples of mapping diagrams. And so uh, in, in this one here, I'm talking about just the person, how much they make. Uh, so Melvin makes 1250. So I have Melvin here, and it points to 1250. I could have the 1250 up here. It doesn't matter that uh, Melvin's and Sarah's lines cross. It doesn't matter at all. Sarah makes 1410, so Sarah maps to 1410. Muhammad 1575, and Michelle 1290. So that's an example of a mapping diagram. And so we could write that mapping diagram out as a, a list of ordered pairs. Melvin makes 1250, Sarah 1410, Muhammad 1575, and Michelle 1290. And that's an example of a relation that is a function. Now, I'll, I'll give you a specific definition on the second page. But basically, um, if, you are, if you know the first value for the relation, in this case, the person's name, then you can find out how much they make. So if we said, OK, who are we talking about here? Sarah? OK, well, Sarah makes 1410. There's only one Sarah here. It lists that she makes 1410, so she makes 1410 an hour. Uh, if you say, who's next? Muhammad? OK, well, Muhammad makes 1575. You don't see another Muhammad here anywhere. He's only matched up with 1575. You see, if we, let's say Melvin had a second job. Uh, I'm going to put 16 here as well. So let's say at one job, he makes 1250 an hour. At the second one, he makes 16. So we'd have to add over here Melvin, comma 16 to this relation. And so it's no longer a function because Melvin maps to two different salaries. At one he's making 1250, at the second one he makes 16. See up here in the diagram, uh, let's see here. I'm going to, so in the diagram, we'd have to put this uh, 16. And then in the diagram, we would have Melvin mapped to two, two different salaries. And so that would make that not a relation anymore. So let's get rid of uh, Melvin's second job, leave it like one. So that's the, that's the function. Here's an example of another one's not a function. Uh, if we list their birth month and how much they make. So uh, January 1250, so January goes to 1250. May goes to 1410, so May to 1410. But you see, Michelle is also born in May. She makes 1290. So notice that May is going to two different ordered pairs, and or two different values, sorry, and ordered pairs. Uh, down here, so we've got the May 1410 and the May 1290. So that's not a function. Because you can't say, OK, tell me a month, and I'll tell you how much they're making. Because there's two different wages associated with the month of May. So that those two different values, or more than two, uh, makes that to no longer be a function, not a function. So uh, definition, uh, a relation is any connection between variables or any kind of relationship. Uh, they don't have to be numbers, although in math class, you're generally going to be talking about variables and numbers. So anything you could possibly write with an equation would be classified as a relation. And we're going to take a look at some examples that are relations and some that are functions. However, relations aren't just restricted to equations. Okay, But in a math class, you probably always be talking ones with equations. A couple definitions, the domain, we're talking about lots of but domain and range, uh, the next uh, few lessons here, if you're, if you're in my uh, grade 11 functions course. The domain for a relation is a set of possible or per permitted, some people call them permissive, uh, numbers in a set of the independent variable. Uh, the independent variable is the first number in the ordered pairs, the left side in the uh, mapping diagram, it's the horizontal axis in a graph, and we're going to take a look at four graphs below. It's often x, but it doesn't have to be. The range is a set of uh, numbers for the dependent variable, often called y, but again, doesn't have to be y. Uh, it's the second numbers in the ordered pairs. It's the right hand uh, um, the, in the mapping diagrams. Okay, So uh, here's a couple of examples here. Um, this one here is the graph of y equals 2x plus 1. And so the domain, and this funny R, capital R here, is called the set of real numbers. The set of real numbers is all numbers you could possibly think of. So whole numbers, negatives 2, so integer, add integers to that. Any de decimal you could think of, any like root you could think of, square root, any kind of root, cube root, fourth root, if you know what those are, um, any fraction that you could think of, uh, those are all belong to the set of real numbers. 
And so uh, graphically what it looks like is this. If I were to go, so for example, if x is 1 here, then, well, y would be 3, because if I put 1 here in place of x, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So 1 would be associated with 3. Uh, if we were to put uh, negative 1 in place of x, then you're going to get uh, negative 1 for y, because 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. So uh, you can put any number you want in place of x here that you can think of. Uh, there's no number you can't multiply by 2 and add 1. And graphically what it looks like is this. If I think of any positive x value here, somewhere up there the graph's going to exist if you go high enough. And same to the left is you can go anywhere along the axis to the left here. Somewhere down here is going to be a point on that line that continues down here. So the domain is the entire set of real numbers. There's number, no number you could not have in place of x in that relationship. And the same is true for y. Uh, let's back up here. We don't need that one. Yep. Um, y, see the graph goes up forever, so y could be any positive large number, and the same way it goes down here, so y could be any large negative number. So the range is the entire set of real numbers, just as is the dom domain. Now sometimes there's restrictions to uh, domains and ranges. And uh, we're not just talking about uh, functions here, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next page with these same three ones here. But this is a graph of a circle, uh, x squared plus y squared equals 36. And um, I didn't put numbers on the axes, but you see this is showing that that point there is 0, 6. So that's 6 on the y-axis. This is a circle with the center at the zero, 0 point, the origin, and a radius of 6. The square root of 36 is the radius. So this would actually be positive 6 here. This would be negative 6. That would be negative 6 down here on the y-axis. Now, for the domain, see, if we go to the leftmost part of the graph here, x is negative 6 there. And as we trace along the graph, like for example, you know, here, x is negative 3. If we keep on going, you know, x is negative 1 there. x would be 0 here, as per that point shows. And if we keep on going along here, you know, x is 4 there, okay? And then at this point, x becomes positive 6. So as I traced along from here to here, the x values went from negative 6 to positive 6. So that's why we would say that's a restriction on the domain. It's all real numbers such that, and the way you read, well, this actually means that x is greater than or equal to, well, it's, it's between negative 6 and positive 6 inclusive. The way you read this from left to right, you would say this. You would say negative 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 6. When I say negative 6 is less than or equal to x, it's the same as saying that x is greater than or equal to negative 6. So that's why, me, that, that's why this means that x is varying between negative 6 and positive 6. The same is true for y. Uh, range is a set of y values. See, y goes from negative 6 down here to positive 6 up here, so the restriction on y is the same as x. Doesn't always have to be the same, but it is for the circle here. For this uh, parabola down here in the bottom left corner, um, the domain is the entire set of real numbers. See, the function values or y values, uh, you would get them by taking 3 and squaring, uh, well, x, squaring the x, multiplying by 3, subtracting that number x, and subtracting 5. There's no number you couldn't put in place of x here. Um, there's no number you can't um, square, multiply by 3, subtract that number, and subtract 5. Uh, on the, and the way it looks graphically is if I go to larger x values, up there somewhere you're going to see the parabola as it curves up. And the same to the left here. If does, you know, I go to this point here, you know, you know, up around somewhere there, if we trace out the parabola, you'll find that there is a, a point on the graph. So the domain is the entire set of real numbers. The uh, range, however, has a restriction. See, I'm, I'm illustrating here, this is where the vertex is. Uh, the lowest y value is negative 5.08. That's the y value right there, the vertex. See, if we go to the right, go to the left of that, the y values get larger. That's a 0 here, it's positive here. So the restriction on y is y is greater than or equal to negative 5.08. See, in this one up here, for example, for the x, I can't, um, this is saying again, x has to be between negative 6 and 6. I can't use an x value below negative 6. And if I tried to do that, let me show you what happens in the equation, that is. So let's say I tried to find the ordered pair that had, and let's say I tried to find the ordered pair that had x value of negative 7, for example. Okay, let's just say. So I'm going to put negative 7 in place of x here. So I'm going to go negative 7 
squared plus y squared equals 36. Well, negative 7 squared, negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. So this would be 49 plus y squared equals 36. See what I'm trying to do here is find what y equals. Where's that ordered pair that has an, uh, an x value of negative 7? So uh, I want to solve for y here. So I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. So I would get uh, y squared equals 36 minus 49. And uh, 36 minus 49 is negative 13. So uh, I'm kind of running a room right below here. So we'd have y squared equals negative 13. And so the y value would be the root of negative 13, which doesn't exist in the real numbers. So that shows that there is no, um, there is no ordered pair that has an x value of negative 7 because y isn't defined. Uh, for the last one here, this is actually called a hyperbola, um, and um, it's another example that has some restrictions on the, uh, the uh, well, in this case, the domain, not the range. So the domain is the entire set of real numbers, but notice that there's no, there's, you see, the graph doesn't exist between these points here, wherever they are, and I'll show you how to find them. They're actually just the x-intercepts. Remember, you find uh, x-intercepts by, let me find my mouse here again. You find x-intercepts by substituting uh, 0 in place of y. So if I put a 0 here in place of x, so 5 times 0 squared, see this would all be 0 if I substitute 0 in place of y. So I would be uh, solving x squared equals 30, divide out the 6. I think I said x squared equals 30, 6x squared equals 30. So those divide out, I get x squared equals 5 and so in this case we have a positive number to take the root of so x would be plus or minus the root of 5 so this number this would actually be negative root 5 here and this would be positive root 5 here so the restriction on the domain see uh, x has to be less than or equal to negative root 5 or greater than or equal to positive root 5. It can't be between here. Now, there's two ways to say this. You could say that, well, x can't be between them, but we normally say what it can be as opposed to what it can't. Okay, So there are a few exceptions to that, but uh, such that x is less than or equal to negative root 5, that's this part here, or and x is greater than or equal to positive root 5, which is this part here. The range is the entire set of real numbers because it does go up forever. It does go on, down forever if you looked at a larger version of the graph. So uh, y can actually be any number. There's no restriction on y here. Now, uh, a function is a special kind of relation in which for each number, and I kind of started talking about this in the first slide, uh, in the domain, there is only one possible value in the range. And so if we take a look at this uh, set of ordered pairs here, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 3, negative 1, 7, 0, 6. See, these two culprits here have the same x value. And so that's why that's not a function, because of those two points have the same x value, so it's not a function. And I want to show you what graphically looks, that looks like. And so um, on, the, uh, on the slide here, there we go. Um, So I'm gonna in, I'm gonna talk about the two that aren't functions first. So this is a circle here, um, and this point here is three comma five point one nine six one etc. to four decimal places. This point here would actually be uh, still x is three, uh, but y is negative five point one nine six one etc. So actually, this by drawing the vertical line is illustrating that there's two different ordered pairs, and maybe I will write that one on there. See, this would be the ordered pair negative 3, comma, there we go. So that vertical line is illustrating that there's two different points with the same x value, so that's why that's not a function. 
Uh, this one over here, this uh, hyperbola I was talking about, you see if I draw in this uh, vertical line here, it's crossing there and there. So uh, both of those points, uh, if we count one, two, three, four, five, they both have that point and that point have the same x coordinate. It looks like it's about negative five. So again, the vertical line is illustrating there's two points with the same x value. So that's why that's not a function. Uh, the line here doesn't matter, you know, where we draw a vertical line. Notice it's only cutting in one place. We're not one place. We're not finding two different points for the, with that vertical line that have the same x value. So that's a function. We'll give it a check mark. And the same with the parabola here. Draw a line there, there, you know, close to the y-axis. Every single one's uh, it's just touching in one place. So that's also a function. So that's called the vertical line test. A relation is a function if and only if there's no possible way to draw a vertical line through the graph that touches the graph in more than one point for any one of those lines. Uh, therefore, the relation is not a function if it's possible to draw a vertical line that crosses in more than one point. See, um, actually, let me just illustrate here one more thing with the vertical lines. Uh, let's do the pen here. So for example, uh, the the circle here, you see, if I drew a vertical line, and how this good is going to be, that just touched right there, it's not illustrating that it's not a function. Just like over here, you know, if I drew a vertical line right here, that's oh, that was bad, that's only touching there, is not illustrating that it's not a function. I'm trying to look for places, you know, like here, that's it's showing me two different points that are on that relation. So, uh, we say that the y equals 2x plus 1 and the parabola 1 are said to pass the vertical line test, so they are functions. And we're, we say that the, that the uh, uh, circle and the hyperbola are said to fail the vertical line test, so we know they're not functions, those two. And that's the end of the tutorial.